Hey Floss Tube, I'm back. I've got so much stuff to show you today. Um, I got a lot of haul for a change because I don't normally buy a lot of stuff, but you guys on Floss Tube changed that dramatically. I saw stuff that I didn't, even though I have a shop, of course I can't carry everything, so I don't really. Um, I've got to take more notice of what's out there. Let's just put it that way. Um, so what I'll do, I thought today I'll just do the normal video, my whips, um, new starts, some haul, and then I will show you all of my finished projects. Some are FFOs and some are not. But I'll show you them all anyway, and what I plan to do with them, if I've got plans for them. So, no finishes. I didn't finish the seahorse because I had two new starts that I could not help myself with. Um, so I'll show you the new starts. I thought... A couple of weeks ago, I showed you a piece of fabric that was new to my shop and I really wanted to do a mermaid on it and I'd ordered a whole heap of mermaids because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to do. I got all the mermaids in, which I'll show you later, but I ended up starting something that's been sitting in my stash for about two years. Mermaid of Atlantis. Now, I don't know why. I just did. I wanted to get a whole heap of mermaids because I wanted the right mermaid for this fabric. And I didn't think I had any that were good enough. But when I got them all, this was the one that kept calling to me. So, I got quite a bit done on that that is on blue ocean floor fabric by color cascade fabrics and that little needle minder right there how cool is that that was a freebie that christine from needle minder obsession sent to me she had a thing on um in a couple of weeks in october um buy three get one free well, I bought three, but she sent me two free, and that is one of them, and I love him. So that mermaid's also by Christine. So yeah, I got heaps, heaps done on her. I am loving stitching this, and I don't know why she sat in my stash for two years. I think she was just waiting for the right fabric. So that's new start number one. New start number two, which is everybody out there on Floss Tube's fault for this one. I can't show you the chart because it's not the whole chart yet, but you'll know as soon as you see it. The Lakeside Fantasy Cell. Yep, not my type of thing at all. But when I saw all of the progress shots on the various groups on Facebook and on Floss Tube, that little witch and the little wizard totally grabbed me. So yeah, I got it. And of course I didn't want to stitch the whole border first because I want to catch up with the little characters. So I'll do all the little characters that have come out because we just got the November one yesterday. And then I'll get in and get some of the board, some more of the border done. Um, or I'll go back to the mermaid <laughs> or something else in my stash. I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen. And that little needle minder. Gina. Needle minders by Gina. Um, I won that one from Gina. Oh, I think I bought it or I won another one I can't remember but I wanted to add stuff to what I'd won so I, that was one of them and she sent me this gorgeous little lizard 
needle minder because she knows I love lizards and a little pair of lips so yeah that one's from Gina but um and that's an ice dye by color cascade fabrics but yeah I have got a little bit of the little Pegasus to go and then I'll move over to the wizard I did do a little bit of um, work on the seahorse and there's the lips that I was just talking about from Gina. Um, I decided, I think I said last week that I might keep it out to try and get it finished. I decided to do that. So I just put a few stitches in him while I feel like it until I get sick of it. The thing is, it's not that confetti heavy. So I don't know. I think, I think I was just so keen to start the fantasy sale that this just kept get pushed, like got pushed aside. The same with the Little Mermaid, um, Mermaid of Atlantis. I was just so keen to start it that this just got pushed aside. Um, so yeah, got a little bit done. Got a little bit done on him. Not too much. Oh, sorry, I just dropped the threads for him. They shouldn't even really be out here. Uh, slash. Oops. Oops sorry. <laughs> um, didn't get a lot done on him either. Same reason. Uh, that's where I'm up to on him. So still working on that guitar. Still plodding away. We'll get there. So yeah. Oh, the definitely the the mermaid of Atlantis and the fantasies that grabbed my attention this last fortnight. Um, I wanted, I thought Death by Cross Stitch would be started by now, but I still haven't got the patterns. Still haven't received them yet. So waiting on that as well from the supplier. Okay, so they're, they're my whips that I worked on this last fortnight. Um, oh, I forgot to bring one out. I also did a little bit of work on Chief, the skull with the big headdress. I did more on him as well. Not a great deal from what you saw last time because I think I put him away not long after the video that I did last time. So, yeah... The Lakeside Fantasy Cell. Who'd have thought? Not my thing at all. But here I am. And there's a new one coming out, which I probably will be tempted. Not sure if I'll jump on it straight away or if I'll wait like a, like and see what happens with it. Um, what comes out, what other people are stitching. And if I like it, I'll jump on it. <sighs> Another floss tube. temptation I'd never bought these before ever I was never interested in small designs ever but like I've said in my last few videos I want to move away from the big massive like 300,000 stitches things that take a year two three four years to finish and start getting some little stuff done and my tastes have changed. I quite like these designs now. Um, I also got the DVD collection, which I haven't opened yet. It's still in the plastic. So I haven't had a look through that yet. But that's from two... Th it's all of the magazines. So everything that was in the magazines from 2011 to 2014. And then I've got the 2016. So I don't have the 2015. But this should tide me over. Um... Yeah, that'll be really fun to go through and have a look at that. And that's Floss Tube's fault. <sighs> Another chart. Now, I've got a heap of charts. And it's stuff, like I said to you, my tastes are changing. It's stuff that I normally wouldn't um, go to. But I'm really loving it. Um, I decided that I want to do spring by lavender and lace the celtic spring as before i want to do all of them 
but I want to do this one first. Um, so that's in there. <laughs> okay, I'll get these mirabilias. Yeah, I went a bit nuts. Mermaids, which I wasn't that keen on. But now that I've started that one, the Mermaid of Atlantis, and seen how small they actually are, they're not that big. They're not as big as the ladies and the queens. I think I could have a new addiction. So, Mermaid of the Pearls. I think that's Gypsy Mermaid. Siren and Shipwreck. Bluebeard's Princess. And Shimmering Mermaid. I know there's heaps of, heaps of other mermaids, but that will do me for now. I've got enough for now. And another one, I saw this posted probably two or three different people in different groups on Facebook are stitching this one. And it's another one I never, ever would have even thought to grab it. But when I saw their works in progress, I'm like, I have to have that design. And that is the sleigh, the Christmas Eve couriers. And it is, so it's part of that collection because I know it's all the reindeers as well. I don't think I'll do the reindeers. I don't think I'm that keen on doing all of the reindeers, but I really love this. I love it. I might even, um, might even make that a new start soon because I don't think it's really that big. It's not really that big and it's Christmas coming up. Why not? Okay, I'm going to point the finger at my darling Bluebell. Is that... I should have written this down. Darling Bluebell? Miiki? Mikey? I don't know how to pronounce your name. <laughs> you have to teach me how to pronounce your name. I did it. I bought a Chatelaine and in the Colour Cascade Fabrics group we've started an like a event page and whoever's got Chatelaines whether they're kitted up already or not we're all going to start stitching them in July next year and we're doing it in July next year because we all need the six months to get all the stuff that's you need for them so yeah I bit the bullet and I really love this design because I know I know exactly where it's going to go in my house um it, that one's called the oh, I think blue Moroccan lace Mandela but I, I loved it as soon as I saw that I was like I have to have that design I am scared scared of that design though because there's so many different stitches on there that I've never ever done but I found a really good thing in this magazine while I was flicking through it while I was having lunch um there was on the back page there's a whole heap of different stitches and how to do them which I'm gonna go through later um I mean, I've never heard of half of these. I've never done anything like this. So I'm going to go through that later and have a really good read of it. Um, because a lot of the, the Chatelaines, well, the Chatelaines and the next chart I'm going to show you, which I got as well. But I've kind of changed my mind about this one. Um, the... I've seen this around heaps. I'd seen this around and I was putting it off and putting it off because I knew it wasn't all cross stitch. And I think the one I really wanted was the Peacock Band Sampler, the cross stitch version. 
I think that's the one that I'll probably end up going with. But I bought this and I went and bought the Dinky Dyes thread pack. I'm, I'm waiting for that. But I think, I don't think I'll do this. I think I'll do that Peacock sampler band one with the, it's just cross stitch version. Um, and I think I'm going to use the thread pack and do the same kind of variation in the colours on death by cross stitch. So the threads won't go to waste. Um, yeah, so I've changed my mind about this one. Um, I love it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. But then I saw that the Peacock one and it had a just cross stitch version and I think I'll end up going with that instead. Um, I don't know why this is out because I've, I think I've showed you this one before. Have I showed you that one before? It's called Witch's Night Out. Oh my god, I love this design. I need to start that one sometime soon. <sighs> Needle minders. I showed you the little skull and crossbones. And like I said, Christine had buy three, get one free. I bought the little Pac-Man ghost. <laughs> That's what I think it is. And the pumpkin was a freebie because I actually chose like the Hello Kitty skull, the ghost and the little Pac-Man ghost. And so the pumpkin was the freebie and she also threw in that little skull and crossbones for me as well, um, which went straight on a whip because I fell in love with it straight away. So they're those. Fabric. Of course, I don't buy fabric from anybody else anymore. I do have a lot of other people's fabrics in my stash, which I will use. Um, I, I don't think I'll sell it um, because I love fabric. And, and, you know, their stuff's different to mine. And there'll be something one day that calls for that fabric. So, but these two pieces... This is a brand new colour by Colour Cascade Fabrics. It's got to go on the website yet, yet which will do that tonight. Um, it's like a pink and purple. When I first showed the girls in the group, I said it reminded me of Hubba Bubba Bubblegum. So the name of this fabric is going to have bubblegum in the name of it. Um, so that's that one. If I pull it out a little bit more, you probably see through it and then you lose the colour. So that's that's that. I love, love that. Um, I don't have any plans for it though. But this is my piece. I'm not putting, giving that away. <laughs> um, another piece I dyed up. And I made a mistake with it because I wanted to... I wanted this colour, it's called Jaded by Colour Cascade Fabrics and I wanted it for Fairy Ideal, Fairy Ideal because I went on the viewer and she looks really good on this colour. Um, silly me just assumed like all the rest, you know, a lot of the Mirabilia's fit on 18 by 26 well she doesn't. I need a bigger piece. So there's another piece there for one of the mermaids. Until I do um, another one the right size for fairy ideal. Oh, I think also what I did, I did it on 25 count instead of 28 count. Um, which I don't think is really good for mirror. It's not no good for mirror Billy. So a mermaid won't go on that. Um, something else will. Because it's beautiful. It's a beautiful colour. Um, I'm sure I'll find something. Um, that's all for my haul. I do have more stuff coming. Like I said, there's still one, um, one parcel I'm waiting on from when I ordered this stuff. Excuse me. Dry throat. I did get a little present in the mail from one of my customers, though. I love my customers. think they're fabulous. 
especially when they send me stuff. <laughs> And it's got nothing to do with cross stitching and I couldn't believe it. I actually could not believe that she sent me this because she said to me, you can't get it in Australia. She can only get it in from the US and she had to order it, um, order it in. I'm going to take it out of the packet and I'm really hoping that I don't ruin these. Look at that. I have never tried these before, but Beck, thank you so much. You could not have picked a more perfect design for for me. So there's little skulls, um, all skulls and skeletons, and I freaking love it. So there's like two lots of two sets how cool are they um so and she, that's not all that's not all she sent me i've never i look I, I, i've got nails but they used to be a lot longer um but because they're in water all the time i don't do a lot with them that's why you always see my fingernails and they're normally got dye underneath them or my hands are black but she said to me that these if they're done properly will survive the water and she also sent me some little um practice run ones so i can mess them up without messing the skulls up um she also sent me this look I'm not going to use these as a practice run because they're too cute. I'm going to actually wait until I know what I'm doing. Little foxes. <laughs> and then there's all this. Um, all these. Like that. These are the practice run ones. So I can mess these up. And that one. And that one. Look at that. That's cool. That one. And that. So I'll be having fun with those. And she also sent me an application kit. Oh, look, there's a practice run one on there as well. Yeah, so that will be fun. I can't wait for that. Maybe I should leave... I use the practice runs ones and I should leave putting the skulls on until I close down for Christmas break and then I can have some nice nails for a few weeks. So that's another little non-stitchy thing but it was a lovely gift and I thank you very much Beck. Um, if any of the Aussie girls want to go for some Jamboree nails, Rebecca Axe does them. Um, so that's it for haul. So let's go to my finishes. I'm going to start with the unframed stuff. I didn't get to my parents' place to take photos of what I've done at their house. Um, I'll do that another time. I think I have maybe, actually I may have the original charts in this folder that I've done for them in here. Um, let's have a look. No, I don't. I don't have it. I think I ended up just finishing the ones I did for her. Um, because they were kits and it was just like little leaflets, um, I think I just threw it out when I finished. Okay, so we'll start with this one. I stitched to keep the voices quiet. These were designs that I had on my website um, when I very first started. They were by a company called Make It. I've used Threadworks threads on there. And that's called, the fabric is actually called Peacock, I think. Yep, that's Peacock by Colour Cascade Fabrics. 
that might actually go on one of those banners those um, banners those bell pull things that I bought this heaven and earth design um, I can't remember what it's called but obviously that little dragon looked like my little lizard <laughs> so I had to do him he's so cute so cute it's just one of those um bookmark story keeps from heaven and earth signs only took a couple of weeks so that was a good one uh, this one which we saw last week is the Cirque Day Circles by Ink Circles and that's on Back in Black Colour Cascade Fabrics Raven by Nora Corbett on Into the Mystic by Colour Cascade Fabrics. Here's some more witches. Gwen by Nora Corbett on that fabric is called Candy by Colour Cascade Fabrics and another witch this is called Electra I love the colours in that the oranges and the reds and the yellows it's just even in his little in the little pumpkin it's amazing and that's on a mist dye of Gold Digger by Colour Cascade Fabrics still looks good to me <laughs> um, this is another recent finish that you would have seen which is the something wicked by Lardy Da and that's on Riders on the Storm and of course I changed the sock color to hot pink and black green's not my favorite color and it was greens in the pattern and I had some really cool silks from thread pickers things called pink goth so i kind of cut it up and, to, and just had the pinks and the blacks kind of separated them and stitched the socks that way and this is was a free design by love thy thread and it was filigree heart and that thread is jillian's sugar plum by threadworks and the fabric is Purple Heart by Colour Cascade Fabrics. I'm going to make that one into a pillow. Um, this one here, I'm not sure what to do with. I think I might make that into like a little pillow that can sit on the table where all the witches are going to go. Um, my, all the witches, Nora Corbett witches that I'm doing, I'm going to put in white frames. And they're going on the blue wall that's in my house. Um, the only thing that's going to be different is all their fabrics but the white they're all going in white frames because the white will look really good on that blue wall um, that's the plan and there's a little table like a little hall table just under that and I want to put all my witchy stuff in that little nook so that's my plan there now I've got a big one <laughs> which needs to be framed I might have to stand up for this one as well um, that is called advice from a caterpillar and it's a heaven and earth design um, this design I love I love it I don't know if you can see uh, there's a whole heap oh, sorry I'm pulling the phone down there's a whole heap of chronic through that smoke oh, can't really see it but that is beautiful and I love that and it needs to be framed <sighs> um, that's 
one of the big ones. I'll finish. This one is a Joan Elliott. It came in a kit. Never Stop Dreaming, I think it's called. That's that one. This is one where I had the threads. This is before I even knew what hand dyed fabric was when I did this. Um, I'm saying 20 years ago, 15 years ago. No idea that the hand dyed fabric even existed. I got this as a kit and I finished it and I washed it and the threads ran into the fabric. The thread colours. Um, I've done a whole series, which I forgot to get, which I'm going to have to go get, of the Olga Gostin Australian Heritage Houses. Um, I think it was DMC that bought the, them out as kits. All the Aussie girls will know these because they pretty much was one of the only things for the last 20 years that was available in Spotlight. Um, our so-called craft store that hasn't changed their cross-stitch patterns in 20 years. Um, so that's one of those. I'm going to just go and get the others, so I'll just spoil That's another one. I framed that myself. Oh, that one. I love these houses. I've got a thing for old houses. So when I saw these, um, yeah, I've got, a, I've got heaps more to do. Um, I might pull another one out soon because these stitch up really quick and they're just so beautiful like in, I'm, I'm, like I said I love old Aussie houses so there's a, heaps of French knots and back stitch and you name it in there so that's the houses Aussie girls will know this as well as the AFL team for Carlton. I did that for my partner, but I've never framed it for him, so I'm pretty slack. Um, another one. This was a stitch along by Alessandra Adelaide Needleworks, and I used Silver Springs fabric by Colour Cascade Fabrics, and the thread is Mosaic by Threadworks. If you can see colors in that um yeah i think that may become a pillow as well so they're all my finished projects that need to actually be finished um that one's getting dirty already it's not even out of the bag um some frame stuff i showed you the houses this was framed in my daughter's bedroom, but her and her brother were fighting and put their elbow through the glass and broke the frame. But that's another heaven and earth design. And for the life of me, I can't remember. I know the artist was Selena Fennick, but I can't remember what the chart was called. I loved doing this, I have to say. Again, no idea at that time, I had no idea about hand dyed fabric. If I stitched this again, I would not stitch the background. I would get a hand dyed fabric. Um, this one is a uh, Therese Wensler or Teresa Wensler. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but that is in my son's room which is probably getting a little bit too old for this. So I think I might bring this out and put it with stuff that I'm going to hang up on my cross stitch wall when I get that started. Now this is another big one. It's Mystic Stitch. And this was professionally framed. And it's the baby ghosts. You can see the leg, see my doors open. Let's see that. Oh, I love this. This 
would have to be my favourite finish. I, I love it. I can't tell you how much I love that. This is my first ever cross stitch that I started when I was started when I was getting up through the night breastfeeding my youngest so that's going back 15 16 years ago and I'm the sort of person that if I wake up at four o'clock in the morning I can't go back to sleep so I'll get up so when she was having a like four five o'clock or three four o'clock morning feeds I'd stay up and cross stitch because there's no point going back to bed when I only had to be up in a couple of hours for the other kids and get them to school so I started cross stitching and this was the first one that I done and I love him and he's professionally framed as well my mum when I finished it came over one day and asked if she could take take it to show her friends what I'd done and she came back with it about a week later in a frame. She went and had it framed. So I love this one. That one's always going to have a special spot. Um, so they're all my finishes. I don't have a lot for someone that's been stitching for a long time. Um, because like I said, I've always, as you can see, I've always stitched pretty big stuff. Even the... Um, the houses and you know they're full of French knots and back stitching and intricate like just you know details um, they don't stitch up really really quick still got a couple of months of work on them if you work on them just solely it still took me a couple of months um, but yeah a, a lot of the stitching I did was really big stuff so so yeah, that's that's my finishes. Um, I I have um, I have another tag as well. Um, Adele's for reals though. I'm wondering if I should do it now. Okay, yeah, let's do it now. Um, I'll just get it out. I want to do the partner tag, but I can't pin my partner down at the moment. If he is here, he's tired. <laughs> um, he's working heaps lately, so we'll get to it. Um, so there's only 10 questions in this, so it's nice and quick. So what level of stitcher do you consider yourself? Well, I thought I was pretty up there stitcher until I saw some of these other charts. Now I've never done the stitches, specialty stitches that are required in the Chatelaine um, and the Northern Expression. So I'm going to say intermediate because yeah, I'm not nowhere near up there with those stitches. How many whips and UFOs do you honestly have? Last count because I did this in the first first video or second video I think I said I had 30 and I finished three but I've added two more so I'm gonna say 29 <laughs> um, are you enabled easily well I didn't think I was but after the haul I got last week apparently I am I didn't I, I just I hadn't bought stuff for so long and I think I think I was in that rut of I was working on whips and just trying to finish stuff and I was getting really bored with everything that I stitch so I wanted to get new stuff so this last couple of weeks I've had a bit of a binge buy and that won't happen all the time though um, I did mention to the girls in my group that if they see any mystery stitch alongs um, come up, they really interest me to let me know. I like the idea of not knowing what's happening until like two weeks later or a month later. Um, do you suffer from sad? 
stitches ADD. Yes, terribly. I live for new starts, I've discovered. And I think that's the thing. I My addiction is new starts. I love gathering all the stuff and choosing the fabric and getting the beads if I need them. Um, I love all that kind of stuff. I start it. And within two days, I'm like, I'm bored. I want to stitch something else. So, yeah, I do terribly. Have you finished a fully stitched project? I've finished heaps. There's another big, massive, fully stitched project that I finished that I gave to my mum's friend. Um, I can't remember what it's called. But, yeah, so there's another one to add to that. Do you enjoy confetti? It depends on how the whip is looking i've got projects that are confetti heavy and i understand when i'm looking at it the need for that confetti because it means to me that there's a lot of detail in that chart but i've also got a lot of charts that have a lot of confetti and that confetti just does not need to be there it's making no difference to the design and sometimes i find it actually takes away from the design so that is a yes and no answer how many finishes do you have this year and how does that compare to question two i've only sorry i've only had four Four finishes this year and 30 starts oh actually probably more than 30 so it doesn't my new starts and whips way out way out do my finishes are you bothered by your answer in the last question would you rather have less or more I'm not really that bothered by that Look, I've, like I said, I've discovered I love the whole new start thing and that's what I enjoy. I enjoy finishes as well. It's the bit in the middle that gets me. <laughs> I've got to get to start to enjoy the actual stitching of the project further into it than a couple of weeks. Um... so no i'm not bothered but in a way i am do you have any dirty little stitchy secrets what could that mean oh. i don't think so i'm pretty out like honest and out there with everything i do <laughs> dirty little secrets maybe Okay, well, maybe I don't always undo the knots and I just don't pull them through the hole and leave it at the back and there might be a bit of cotton at the back that I just stitch over constantly. That's a dirty secret. I know some people like their backs to be as neat as their front. Personally, I don't care because it's going to have a big board on it when it's framed or pillows or whatever. That would, does that count? I dare you to show your messiest back. Well, I'm actually lucky I've got these out because I would have to say this being a fully stitched project, being confetti heavy, um, that's the back. And the way I start stitching, because I don't knot it or anything like that, um, I leave little tails. Uh, see if you can, I leave little tails out. And just stitch over them so my my backs are quite messy um and this one being a fully stitched heaven and earth confetti crazy design i would say that's definitely my messiest back because um um i don't consider my backs to be that neat even on other stuff that's not so confetti heavy or so, or so big. So, yeah, that would be it. 
so there's my um, Adele's for reels though tags nice and quick not too much drama um, so I will see you again in two weeks time I want to say I don't think I'll have much haul but I might have a fair few starts I might that might take over especially because I haven't opened this yet um, there's a couple of things in the 2016 magazine that I really like but I can't wait to open that and find what's in there um, so who knows who knows I don't have any concrete plans of new starts right now but I know there will be some I've been dyeing myself some extra bits of fabric because um, I've noticed that I don't have a lot of my own fabric in my stash um, and I know there's fabrics I've got that I think will go really good with some of those mermaids so I'll try and get my fabric dyed and on the right count this time not on 25 count I'd say I go straight to 25 count um, but with the mirrors I want to use 28 so that I don't know actually I want to show you another chart I got this in for someone else but I'm actually thinking of doing it myself because as you can see from advice from a caterpillar I've got a thing for Alice in Wonderland um, this is by Ori TM I'm thinking I really like that I might do something like that and I've also got coming in for the shop um, a whole heap of the Brooks books patterns the Alice in Wonderland the Wizard of Oz the Little Women there's a whole heap of them um, and there's a whole heap of Lena Lawson designs coming in as well and I'm not 100% on them but when I see them like I like the pictures I really like the pictures and they're really different so they could be something I think about doing as well until then, until next fortnight, next two weeks, I will talk to you later. Um, have a good stitchy time in the next couple of weeks. I hope you have lots of new starts and lots of haul. And I will talk to you then. Bye.